Hello all and welcome to Paleo Literature, where we go into the fossil record and look back on some cool science, share interpretations, drop cool trivia, and or knowledge bombs with an open discussion to match. Today we will be discussing an academic research article from the journal Nature. This research was published only four years ago in 2019 by Trio et al dubbed a new species of homo from the late Pleistocene of the Philippines. This paper goes in depth on the topics of paleoanthropology, anatomy, and paleobiogeography. Access to this paper online will be available as a link in the video description below, which is provided by the journal Nature, as well as the other sources I've used herein will also be in the video description below. So, with some of this context now set up, let's dig into the exciting results and rigorous reconstruction based around an important discovery which this paper shows. It all began in 2007, when a footbone from Kalao Cave, located in northern Luzon within the Philippines, was recovered. Since then, more material has been recovered, especially in the years 2011 and 2015. This includes teeth, finger bones, and a femur fragment. These remains, albeit fairly fragmentary, are important for two major reasons. Firstly, these remains representing a handful of individuals when dating two of said remains places the age of these bones at 67,000 years ago, the Upper Pleistocene Epoch, via Uranium Thorium series dating method. This is extraordinary because this makes these remains the oldest of any hominin to appear in the Philippines and has remained such since this description paper. Secondly, the remains have interesting characteristics, with the authors in the introduction of the paper making comparisons to the southern ape hominins we know as Australopithecines as well as us, Homo sapiens, due to the mosaic composition of traits amongst the remains. These are known as synapomorphies, and given the age of the remains, this prompted the trio and colleagues to erect a new taxon, specifically a new novel species known as Homo luzonensis. As tradition and taxonomic nomenclature, Homo is the genus we are part of, and that makes us related on some level to Homo luzonensis. Moreover, when a species name ends with ensis, usually it means that that's the location where it was discovered. This is appropriate as Homo luzonensis was found on the island of Luzon from the Philippines. The holotype, diagnostic remains of the novel species, the first of Homo luzonensis from the discoveries made from 2007 to 2015, were designated as dentition due to their unique nature when compared to other hominins. However, the paratypes, other assigned specimens with the holotype, have other interesting features largely not found in other hominins, such as upper premolars with two to three roots, long and narrow finger bones, similar to H. sapiens, us, and furthermore, these finger characters being unknown to a large amount of much in studied detail hominins, like Neanderthals and the robust hominins known as Paranthropus. There is also some other referred material, such as a juvenile femur shaft housed at the National Museum of the Philippines in Manila. I'll also mention that Kalau Cave is not the only cave of its kind, despite producing H. luzonensis. It is one of 300 caves peppered across elevated mountainous regions of the Philippines. However, due to the important discovery and description of the Luzon Man, it has since then been recognized as a culturally significant site under the jurisdiction of the Philippines. The methodologies employed in this study are basically an anatomical description of Homo luzonensis to justify its classification, and some comparative anatomy analyses and certain features to elucidate anything significant. I'll mention here too that in biology and by extension paleontology, that species are hypotheses that are testable and are able to be falsified, hence there are rigid frameworks for defining a species under a given species concept at the current time. In this case, we're utilizing the morphological species concept as this is the usual approach in paleontology. 
A lot of the figures featured in this section of the paper introduce these analyses, such as the dental metrics used to mirror overlapping traits, using primarily dental traits, which alone aren't good enough for identifying new species, however, homo and adjacent genera are an exception to this, which is a great, relatively static component in a very volatile field such as paleoanthropology. Moreover, they also took a close look at the premolars of the homo species used in comparative anatomy, surrounding Homo luzonensis, utilizing the following taxa, Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalensis, both anatomically modern and pre anatomically modern Homo sapiens, and Homo floresensis. They also did a similar anatomical comparison approach for the foot bones of H. luzonensis, yet included Australopithecus in this analysis. The data recovered after establishing the anatomical diagnosis for H. luzonensis revealed some interesting anatomical trends which we'll talk about later concerning the evolutionary implications in regards to hominin evolution, which by extension also includes our evolution. Concerning the anatomical analyses conducted with these assigned remains to the newly defined H. luzonensis taxon, it reveals that the premolar condition in said new taxon somewhat leans to the condition found in H. neanderthalensis and H. floresensis. Moreover, also somewhat similar to pre anatomically modern humans, but less so than H. neanderthalensis and H. floresensis in the overall sample set used in these efforts concerning comparative anatomy. In the anatomical analyses concerning the foot bone of H. luzonensis, it was found that it was the most similar to Australopithecus, one of the last ancestors before the fossil record's appearance of Homo habilis. More interestingly, these footbone morphologies do not overlap at all with H. floresensis or with extinct or extant H. sapiens from the overall dataset. These Results, then, reveal a mosaic of anatomical features from older and more recent genera in line with humans or split off from them, which is incredibly interesting. So at the end of our anatomical description proving H. luzonensis, for now, to be a valid and unique taxon, along with the elucidation of morphological traits, what does this mean for our understanding of hominin evolution? Well. Despite being a new taxon, it still doesn't tell us a lot. The anatomical similarities between H. luzonensis and us, Homo floresensis, Australopithecus, and even Paranthropus are peculiar, indeed rendering H. luzonensis as a hominin with a mosaic of features. However, until more remains are found from these limestone caves or elsewhere in the Philippines, it cannot be confidently inferred what locomotoric abilities H. luzonensis had in life. All we can infer for, for the most part, is that it had both climbing and bipedal capabilities, seeing how these features are also seen in Australopithecus. Without more postcranial remains that are not fragmentary in nature, it's going to be difficult figuring out an image of the ecology H. luzonensis likely had in life. On the other hand, concerning the evolution itself, H. luzonensis was not the only one in Eastern Asia at approximately 67,000 years ago, Upper Pleistocene Epoch, and was also joined by us Homo sapiens, H. floresensis, the enigmatic Denisovans, and mysterious hominins arising from Zhushang in China. The relationships of all these taxa remain to be better understood, despite Failure at DNA extraction, given how recent the remains are concerning H. luzonensis. Other temporal implications were revealed by this study conducted by DeTrio and colleagues herein. Since H. luzonensis bone samples match the uranium thorium dates of the site location where H. luzonensis was discovered from, this can somewhat extend H. luzonensis's temporal range to 50,000 years ago at the very least, still in the upper Pleistocene epoch, but a bit later on, from 67,000 years ago, obviously. However, more interestingly, based on remains discovered and published on in 2018 concerning stone tools and remains of a cut-up rhinoceros, if attributable to H. luzonensis, which is possible given the abilities of the genus Homo at this time, 
it would stretch its temporal range to more than 700,000 years ago in the middle Pleistocene epoch Chibanian stage concerning its inferable presence on Luzon within the Philippines. Geographically, how H. Luzonensis arriving to Luzon remains somewhat mysterious, as even during when the lowest sea levels were present, it couldn't cross from continental Asia to the Philippines via land bridges. This is the same method concerning how Eurasian hominins migrated into the Americas via the Baringa land bridge that connected Russia and the state of Alaska of the USA at one point during the Ice Ages the same temporal intervals I've been discussing herein. Despite this metaphorical mammoth in the corner of the room, both H. luzonensis and H. fluorescensis appear south of the Wallace Line, an important biogeographical boundary for Far East Asia coined by one of the first describers of the concept of evolution, Alfred Russell Wallace, at approximately the same time. Concerning the vertebrate biota of the Philippines in general, it's highly endemic, uh, meaning you can't find it anywhere else in the world, and on top of this isolation from continental Asia because of this, it can be a reasonable explanation to why insular dwarfism would take place, which shrinks vertebrates due to the lack of resources, which may be applicable to H. luzonensis. However, it can yield also evolutionary convergence or reversals, which may explain the mosaic of traits in H. luzonensis. This as well concerning the interrelations of the hominin taxa from these areas around the Far East toward the end of the Ice Ages are just only some unanswered questions from this description paper. To address these unanswered questions, I'll briefly skim over some resultant publications since the description of H. Luzonensis published in 2019 by Detroyo and colleagues. In the year of 2021, due to the origins of both H. Luzonensis and H. Fluorescensis still being debated in paleoanthropology, a morphometric study of H. Luzonensis's teeth found that their trends anatomically point Luzonensis being more towards Homo erectus rather than basal forms, such as H. habilis. They also found concerning the internal structure of H. Luzonensis's teeth that it generally trends more to Homo erectus and Homo fluorescensis rather than H. sapiens and H. neanderthalensis. However, despite the mosaic morphology of H. Luzonensis reflected yet again, Within another study, to no one's surprise, the results recovered suggest that H. fluorescensis and H. luzonensis likely evolved from some populations of H. erectus that dispersed from continental Asia into the various islands surrounding it, which also includes the Philippines, eventually becoming isolated along with subsequent speciation events occurring, which results with H. luzonensis. In the year of 2022, the remains of other Indonesian hominin fossils further elucidate the ecological trends that can also be seen in H. luzonensis's description paper from 2019. Finding to be consistent with the original hypothesis of insular dwarfism greatly influencing the body size of H. luzonensis, introduced in said 2019 description paper. It can be inferred then that at this time, Pleistocene Indonesia was a place where both hominins and other fauna shrunk considerably which then influences the behavior of these animals. However, more remains and more remarkable evidence should elucidate this aspect of Pleistocene Indonesia further as more studies are published. And finally, in this year of 2023, the temporal ranges of H. luzonensis and H. fluorescensis were found statistically to be insignificant to Homo erectus, which this means that it is not entirely surprising to have found H. luzonensis and H. fluorescensis in this late into hominin evolution, and after the last H. erectus specimen known in the fossil record, the specific subspecies being Homo erectus erectus, currently recognized from the Solo River in Indang, central Java, Indonesia as the latest surviving and most advanced H. erectus subspecies, becoming extinct by 117 to 108,000 years ago during the Upper Pleistocene Epoch, which predates H. luzonensis and H. fluorescensis. 
Moreover, the study goes on to state that the results are practically unanimous in demonstrating that the latest appearances of H. fluorescensis and H. luzonensis in the fossil record shouldn't be surprising or unsuspected for the fossil record relative to H. erectus, later stating that these smaller hominin species are within the temporal ranges of H. erectus's appearance across Asia as stated prior, which if we consider the butchered rhinoceros remains earlier mentioned but again reinforce this idea if we consider them to be H. luzonensis that is. Furthermore, this study shows that there is still plenty more out there to be discovered concerning hominin evolution and seeing how it all connects, seeing how it elucidates some gaps over the temporal ranges from one species of homo to another or multiple in this case. That's it for this time on the channel, stick around, stay tuned, and as always, thanks for watching. <music>